The, uh, this presentation was uh, given at a meeting of the European Society for the Study of Cognitive Systems uh, in London in uh, 2005, uh, the title of The Child in the World, and it reflects material on my website about the motor theory as applied to the acquisi acquisition of language uh, by children. Few, first of all, a few introductory comments. Um, the child and the world. There's nothing more wonderful to watch than a small child of two or three years old speaking to its mother, holding a conversation with its mother. It seems miraculous, as many have said, that a child can in such a short period reach so far in its use of this most precious of human possessions language. In this presentation I consider how it's possible uh, that in a remarkably short time uh, a child can acquire all the complexities of its parent language and at the same time amass a large lexicon to refer to things in the world, to objects and actions of all kinds and so begin to have a grasp on the world in which it finds itself. Through language the child and indeed all of us in time build up a picture of the world the world is reflected in us in language, uh, and this is also a miraculous process. Okay, how we, does one start? How do children acquire language? You're a very young child. You have to discover the internal structure of a system that contains tens of thousands of units, which can be assembled in an infinite number of combinations. But only one of those infinite combinations is correct in the sense that it's the one you want for the language you want. This system is human language. How improbable it seems that a mere child can discover the underlying structure and use it to communicate, yet most children do this easily and quickly in, in their early years. There are distinct stages in this. Stage one, how does the child find the sounds of speech? First of all, the child has to be able to pick out from the surrounding noise, all the noise around, the special sounds which are required for speech, the sounds which are quite different from, the, from shouts and cries and musical sounds and animal noises. The child is innately able to do this. And indeed, various species of animals seem able to distinguish speech sounds from other sounds. Uh, the child can uh, do this because each speech sound is the product of its own special articulatory gesture, that is, of a specific movement pattern of the speech organs. The speech organs are the tongue, the larynx, vocal cords, etc. These motor patterns, motor programs, originated in evolutionary history uh, from the novel application to produce speech of the limited set of elementary movements of the limbs and body which we share with other animals. So at birth an infant is sensitized to speech sounds because they generate neural motor programs which resonate with the innate set of elementary bodily motor programs. Researchers have been able to show that very young infants can distinguish between different speech sounds. The researchers have used very clever experimental techniques to, to record changes in the infant's response to particular sounds. Uh, for example, changes manifested in head turning or sucking uh, when the infant listens to a succession of speech sounds. They found that the infant, the child who cannot yet speak, can respond to a much larger number of speech sounds than are required for the language spoken by its parents. A Japanese infant can, may respond to English speech sounds which are, are not used or perceived by Japanese adults. An English infant may respond to Chinese speech sounds which English-speaking adults cannot perceive or articulate. So, in fact, infants in this way are innately prepared to acquire any language with any range of speech sounds. This early ability to dis discriminate speech sounds 
more extensive than those in the phonology of the parent language, gets narrowed down as the child is, over months, exposed to the limited range of speech sounds uh, to be found in the speech of its parent.